Hello there, this is uh, Alan again, and um, this is uh, going to be lesson 12. Um, we're starting to build our keyboard filter part 3. We have an outline, and uh, I was looking at the outline and thinking about how we would uh, work, work at the keyboard problem, or at least study the keyboard a little bit. And uh, I checked on my system. I, I know the keyboard has something to do with in and out. Uh, well, BIOS, firstly. But uh, there are, on the computer, there are things called ports. And I know I just happen to remember that there's a, an instruction called in. Uh, Intel instruction called in. And I look it up, and um, the details about what the document said. I'll do this right now. I, I'm uh, just guessed. Okay, maybe the according to, according to my system setup, it says that the range for the keyboard is from 60 to 64. So I saw it. If I could maybe go in. And they told me how to write it down in, and then what they call the accumulator. It's either AX or A low, followed by the port number. So that's a valid instruction. Okay. Now I haven't. I still haven't figured this out. Uh, but I figured out something. Here's one thing. Now, um, I don't know what's this kind of stuff. So I want that thing. And I'll fill everything up with in a this instruction B460. Not R, well, I started 100. That's what that's what's that 100. Say how far. E four six zero. Okay, so it's all the same. Now, when I trace through this, now first thing you're going to notice here, <laughs> and the part that I, doesn't make any sense to me yet is that we're now we've jumped all the way over to a thousand and four and this here is pretty much garbage I mean, this doesn't do anything but maybe it does no this is just zero over and over again this is nothing but sometimes it's not nothing. It's, sometimes it looks like it's jumping, jumping, a procedure of some sort. Uh, no. It's still the same. What do I do after that? Oh, yeah. Instead of uh, doing what I did there, I tried instead of trace the trace, which took us to a uh, thousand and four. I tried to see which means to sort of step over rather than step in. I was guessing that maybe, even though it went to garbage there, maybe it's a the in is sort of like a function call or something. So, so I tried it. And that's pretty much the same thing. Uh, but at some point, I did get something out. A little faster, and maybe not to do that. Um, what we just put in there? Um, 
Excuse me, it's one time when I did it and something else happened. Let's see. What was that? That's cool. Sorry about the name. Something I don't expect in there. Ah! That's what happened. <coughs> Something seems to set these two legs. And when I trace to it, in this case, it's different. Oops. Yeah, that's what I want to call it. Now, what's the happens <laughs> this time? Now, I, if, if it behaves the way it did last time, it's going to take us from 100 to this special combination. If you look beyond that. There's nothing that's just of what we had in there before. So here we are at 100. We traced through it. Now we're at this thing. The new uh, magical numbers that appear from nowhere. And it's doing an actual for some reason. And now there's the end instruction that stops. And there, see? This becomes one C. And that's what happened before. Then, I'll trace through this one. <laughs> now we're back at 1,004 of them. It's very, very strange what's going on here. And AX is now zero. Uh, now I went back. Determined to try to figure out what's going on here. That's again to see if it's the same. So I, I thought I could maybe, maybe if I uh, proceed, see if that Because I really am expecting to land on 102. If it, if it really is a two byte instruction, one, do I just jump me forward or there? So I proceed. And it did, it did the same. You see, the same, same, same. So I thought, okay, I know. I don't know if I've met Echo with at this point for the project, but at some point, I wanted to be absolutely sure. So what I did was, I decided to put in my own breakpoint at 102. I don't know if it's going to work this time. And uh, the instruction for that, of course, to make a break point, is called int 3. Okay? So now, I can just say go. And it, it's got to stop at 102 if it's ever going to get there. So go. And it did. It stopped. And look. One C comes up. So somehow or other, it did manage to get back to where it's supposed to be. And I still haven't figured out exactly what's going on with this. But here we are at our break point. You know, go means uh, to run the program. Remember, we did the edit. When I type go, it's running the program until the program terminates and it's, it's finished. So, the reason it's, and the reason it stopped here was because I, I hard coded in a magic number that I know, which is, which is the code that interrupts the execution flow of the program, uh, so that it can be debugged. And that's called interrupt three. And I'm going to be getting to interrupts in a minute. Um, but now let me show you something else that I found out. I wish the I wish you would do the third thing that it I'm very, very confused about this. Um, 
What are we doing at 27? Right here. This is a good opportunity to try something out. In angle 60. Oh, I tried 62 as well. So let me try that. I want to see what would happen if I trace. I want to see what happens if I trace through it in this case. If it does something different than it. Now. If we've got, uh, <laughs> now we've gone to 106, where there happens to be another in. And this 1C is set. I don't know what's going to happen. But I haven't put this here, this code here, and I don't believe it. This is there before. Let's scroll back. Oh. Here is a hundred. This is the command I put it. And at one oh six, this is filled with in a halos. This wasn't here before. I remember it wasn't like that. So when I traced through this command. It must have done something to fill in this bit. So where are we? So let's trace through it. Now, we're at 111. Really this, I mean, this looks like it's actually doing something. Let's see, does this look like Something a human being would do. Reduce BP, push B at the supreme step. This is this is like setting up for a, a function call. Now that's not a coincidence. Okay. Decrement two pushes and increment and increment. You notice how the uh, this here would be stored BP DNA would push and if BX, I don't know why BX is going up, but let's see what happens. Now compare AX with a special number. It doesn't look like um, random uh, junk. This looks like code. Of course, we just ran a program, so that could be left over from the program we just ran. It does look like something that somebody wrote, but probably not from the end. Alright. Now watch this. Um, this is all crazy because we're never going to use in to read from the keyboard. I, I, I found that out. That is a hundred percent certain. And the reason for that is <clears throat> the reason for that is if there's no convention, there's no standard for that. That's something that the BIOS uh, determines with the hardware what it's going to do, it, how it's going to use that port, and how it's going to translate that into keys, is something the bias does. And there's no way that you could know what that uh, uh, procedure is going to be. It can be anything, depending on the hardware. So, so we have to use the bias. That's good. At least it tells us that we, we don't have to use this in. But watch this. Is this still out? Hmm? Um, okay. So there's our end. I saw it. Well, uh, it, it did go to one of three people. So, uh, and it's doing this word thing, writing memory. And I didn't want to fill up 
filled up with in 60s because it looks like it writes in 60s, so I don't want to do the same as it. So I thought, you know, okay, I'll try X. So I said, so we'll fill from 102, that's the next construction, uh, to 1,000, let's say, and that. Number 100. So there's our in 60 and the rest is FX. Unassembled. FF is uh, un unknown instruction. Okay, so we should wind up that looking at an FF. Now watch what actually happens. See that? Now, what does that tell us? We haven't executed any uh, op code at 102. We didn't do anything. All we did was this in 60. And I don't know how well you're seeing this, but it looks like um, something executed an FF here. Okay, we'll close this down. Luckily I got another one. And I thought, now if that's really true, and I didn't think this was going to happen, and this is another one of those cases where uh, you make a guess, and it seems like a good guess, but you never, never really sure. Uh, so you go to try it out, and anyway, I'll show you. So in a low sixty, uh, in uh, a low sixty. Okay. Uh, it's currently zero there. Uh, oh, here's my first test. So I wanted to confirm that that FFF problem wasn't my fault. So let me get rid of that in there and replace it with something else. So I thought, okay, I'm going to X. Two, something like that, okay. Uh, three byte instruction. Now, one of three, I'm going to put X. This is actually even better because um, it's, it's not aligned exactly with the last one. Yeah, oops. Yeah, it's back. One thousand. That's that. Now, okay. <clears throat> now, if it was my fault that we landed on top of an FF from that last instruction, uh, then it should be my fault if it happens again. So if I trace through this instruction and we wind up and it kills our program, then it was my fault last time. But if it doesn't, it is not my fault. And look at that. We're sitting at an invalid instruction, but nothing, nothing bad happened. The program's still running. Maybe if we tried to run this, it would crack. But we're not. So then I did, then I developed this theory. As usual. My theory was this. Uh, and in a low six. And remember the case where we had, uh, uh, I think it's zeros there. It jumped by four, right? Uh, it jumped to 104. Uh, and when we had S underneath, we got the exception. So I thought that what it's doing 
is it's doing this in a row uh, 60, and then it's also executing whatever comes here following it. So I thought if I put an int 20 here, we'll just terminate program. You know, that when I run this in, the program should quit. <laughs> I mean, trace, you know. I could say proceed, I suppose. Uh, but trace should also, trace should be the equivalent of proceed because I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm not tracing it. This thing, this little instruction here is like a little machine and it does something uh, on its own that, that I'm, I haven't asked for. Let's see what happens. It's <laughs> It still surprises me because I I couldn't remember if it was if I proceeded or traced that uh, other time. So you see, in this I haven't figured I, like I said I haven't figured it out. Um, obviously there is there is a a way to use it, but uh, as far as at least in from sixty. Uh, we're not going to even look at that. Okay, so that means, uh, I don't know, I probably used too much time, but I thought that that was kind of cool. Um, so that means the BIOS. Uh, that's okay, nothing wrong with BIOS. But it means that I have to, you know, let me know quit, do I? I have to tell you now, about this thing called uh, the interrupt table or the interrupts. Now, what this is, I've been typing them in several times. But I, I, last time I typed in int 20. Now, this here is actually a procedure, uh, and the purpose of this procedure is to hand the execution flow back to the operating system. So our program gets some time to run and then when we're done we have to tell tell the operating operating system, okay, it's your turn. And that's what that does. Okay? And that's a great big long procedure. If you want to see a little bit of it, there's a command that can start tracing it through. First thing it does is nothing for a while. And now it's calling it function, cookies and files, calling it function. See, it hasn't really exited the program yet. It's been a whole bunch of different things. Unintelligible uh, stuff. Big, 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 long thing. And if I hit go, it's, it should quit. Now, where did that procedure come from? By the way, look where we ended up. Because, um, because I traced into that function, we went all over the place. We were way up high in memory. Actually, we're probably in what they call the high memory area, which I'm not going to even touch on. That's, if you thought to the Memphis, the uh, addressing stuff I showed you before was crazy, think again. High mem dot sys is crazy. Okay, now let's get out of here first. Okay, back to our happy world of one four four five a hundred. Now. At the beginning of all memory in our one megabyte land, in fact, we don't get a whole megabyte. In, in real DOS, you wouldn't get a whole megabyte. You would get 640,000 bytes. Be that as it may, <clears throat> at zero, the null pointer it would be the null pointer in today's world. Um, is not an invalid address. In fact, 
is a very important address. And uh, let me show you where it's there. You won't get in any trouble. You're allowed to do anything in real mode. Okay, now there's a bunch of numbers here. What each of these numbers represents is a procedure called an interrupt, like this int 20. Now, each of these procedures has an address, and all this is is a table of addresses. So the first four bytes tell you where int 0 is located, interrupt 0. But issued an interrupt 0, it would go to this address. First, first off, how do we read the address? On a Intel machine like this and all the others, uh, I don't know why they did it this way, but again, maybe the wiring was easier. They had some limitation. But you read it backwards. <laughs> so this address, Red backwards is zero zero a seven colon. Better put a colon because this remember is the world of insanity. And the next uh, thing is a ten and then six eight. Okay, a seven ten sixty eight. Now what I'm telling you is true. If I wrote down an int zero function call, which I'm now telling you it's a function call, it should take me directly to this address. What does int zero do? I don't know. That doesn't matter. I told you what int three does, but uh, that's not important. The important point is, does it really go there? So we want to see if it does. In zero accepts the command. There's the command. By the way, it's always CD. So now it should take us to that address. Let me write it down in the group box. Let's do what we have to do box. We have three box only. That was that box. So this is the U3 box. Now we have both things visible at the same time. So it's 0087 colon 1068. We run this int. Not running, it's going to trace, that means step in. So we're just going to go, uh, it should just take us to that address and not do anything else. There it is, see? That's that address. Now, so, what does that tell us? Um, tells us, for instance, uh, that uh, at least looking at the function call rather than looking at the table yeah, be. the uh, parameter is only one byte okay. so uh, that means uh, that in theory we could have uh, up to uh, 256 uh, <coughs> interrupts. Uh, but that's not uh, really the uh, only there are, I think, to 256. There might be, there might be, but I don't think they use those numbers, those high numbers. Uh, and if we dump to the zero memory, then it becomes zero after a while. Uh, yeah, no, this is all garbage here. So, it, that is, it's repeated, so it's, it's not all the way back to here is some repetition of s dot dot, s dot dot. 
So it's uh, invalid. These can't obviously be different functions because we all have the same address. Now, how, where did that start? Actually, this is all started too. So it looks like it only goes up in our case, at least with this simulated machine, up to 100 hacks. So that leaves um, <coughs> uh, can be that much a 100. Well, yeah, I guess so. It's possible. And, um, uh, well, anyway, um, whatever it is, it's obviously, it, it doesn't seem to go higher than 100. So, what is 100 divided by 4? We take the hexadecimal number 100, and we know it takes 4 bytes to make uh, an address. And this is a table of four byte objects. So I want to divide this by four and in binary that would be one and eight zero. So divide by four and shift that by two. So that makes the, this shifts over two times and that's a four. So that gives four. Hundred divided by four equals 40. So therefore we have 40 at least maybe, maybe 40. No, actually, look again. It would have more repetitions. It's probably less than 40 available in, in the simulated environment. Uh, but the important ones for us we are going to be uh, Interrupt 16 for the keyboard and 10. Well, both of these are bias interrupts, and 16 is specific for the keyboard. Now, I, I've gone and looked it up, and just before I finish up here, I'll go through one command, written it down here. And 16. Okay. And there are a couple functions. Now, what it says is the zeroth function uh, is called get keystroke. That's the one. That, that's exactly what we want. So that's why this is called the keyboard interrupt. Uh, the return value, they don't, they're not telling us what to do. It's assuming that you're going to write down in 16. This is the in 16 help, help file, if you like. So the first function takes a parameter where a high, the high byte of a is zero. And after the procedure is finished, a high will give us the scan code of what was typed in, and A low will have the ASCII tariff. So all we got to do, there's a little more information here. There's another level below this, uh, on int 9. Uh, we, won't, we, we don't need that. Let's just see if this one works. So remember, it's, it's zero. Works. So we have to put zero and a low. So normally, if you were programming this and you didn't, and you don't know what the value of ax is initially, you would put zero in instead of by inspection. Moving to a a high zero. Now, um, now, okay, what I'm going to do 
is uh, right down. I tell it to proceed to 104. That's like go, but go with a with a break point. Because I don't want to trace into this in 10 call, or else, uh, you know, we're going to be typing keys and it's trying to read through the keyboard. And I want it to let it go and do its thing on its own. This is one way to do it. And hopefully it should just stop. And up here. That's too bad. Okay. That's not what happened. Maybe that's because we're messing around too much with that. Does that still work? Click this. Clear this up. Get another box. There's something wrong with these boxes. What are I going to do? It's causing trouble. I don't know what I'm going to do. I think it's hung now. Now that should have worked. Let me squeeze it. No, it began. Put in the air. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't work. This looks like... Oh, I said in 10. Oh, I meant 16. That's, that's when it's wrong. It's wrong and correct. So, try again. Put in 0 for the eyes. Int. Remember your number. 16. Now, if I say to go to 104, better work. Uh, it better pause and wait for me to type something in. And I've decided already I'm going to type the letter B because I know it's, it's ASCII code anyway is, is uh, 42. Well, yeah, 42. Okay. Uh, and Is it wait? It, I think it's waiting. I don't see the cursor is blinking, but I don't see the little um, the dash. So I haven't typed anything yet. I'm gonna type the B. Ah, well, something certainly happened, <laughs> but it's not what I expected to happen. So again, here's an example. I know we've got to use a little trickery. Let's uh, go back to 100. Still there for us. Again, I'm going to put a break point at 104. And then move that in 3. So, if it was trying to jump past us and do something, it can't do it now. We've got, we've got a break point there and ready to go. So now I can just. Uh, I'm saying right spot. Now a go is good, good, good enough. Just proceed, just, just go. Now, now this certainly to me looks like waiting for keyboard input. I'm going to press my B. Now it works. See? And it's a, the thing you put, that I put in to allow us to stop. And this is the scan of the ASCII code for B. And apparently, the scan code for B is 30. So now we know how to read a key. And we're also completely on the dark about many other things. Which is quite interesting. Anyway.
next time we'll see a little bit more about this one and then look at the DOS way. So that's it for now. Bye-bye.